Hi, I'm Marie. Welcome to Marie's Kitchen. I'm so glad you're back. Today we are making salmon cakes. The problem that I see with most recipes for salmon cakes is that they tell you to use so much filler, usually breadcrumbs, that it ends up tasting like fried bread instead of a delicious salmon cake. On the other hand, you do need some breadcrumbs in there to help the salmon cake hold together while it cooks. Today I'm going to show you a hack that allows you to use just a little bit of breadcrumbs and still have the salmon cake hold together while it cooks. I can't wait to share it with you. Let's get started. Okay, the first step for our salmon cakes is to take, I'm using fresh salmon. This is a little bit over a pound of fresh salmon, washed and dried, and then you just can um, you know, pat it dry with a paper towel like that to make sure it's dry. The next thing you wanna do is make sure there are no bones in the salmon, little pin bones. So you just wanna run your finger kind of down the salmon like this and see if you feel anything. If you feel any bones in there, you'll wanna pull them out. The next thing we'll do is I've just got a baking sheet lined with some parchment. I'm gonna pop my salmon over there. Now I have seen some recipes where they try to remove the salmon from the skin before cooking it, which is hard to do and completely unnecessary. So so we're just going to cook the salmon on the skin and then it'll fall right off into the flakes that we need. Gave my hands a quick rinse there. And now we can add a little bit of salt and pepper on there. And maybe a little drizzle of olive oil. So I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. We're gonna bake the salmon for about 20 minutes or until cooked through. While the salmon cooks, we can go ahead and prep the rest of the ingredients. And the other great thing about this recipe is really it's just one bowl. So we've got one big bowl out and now we're gonna add our, first is panko and this is, or any breadcrumbs, it's a quarter cup of panko or 21 grams. Several people have asked for it in grams so I'm trying to add that. And I can't remember it so I have it written down. <laughs> So it's a quarter cup of panko, which is a lot less than most recipes. Most recipes use at least one cup of panko. So this is what I love about this recipe is this very little breading. So one quarter cup panko, put that right in. Next is a quarter cup Parmesan, and this is just grated Parmesan. Definitely don't get the shredded or you'll have these big pieces of Parmesan in there. One quarter cup Parmesan. And I love Parmesan in this because it helps bind it and it also adds a little bit of salt and flavor. So it's kind of a secret ingredient to help it hold together without adding a lot of you know, heft, like the bread. Next step, one quarter cup. I use Hellman's mayonnaise. You wanna use a real mayonnaise, nothing like Miracle Whip that has a lot of sugar in it that will throw off the flavor. So one quarter cup Hellman's mayo. When I'm writing my recipes, I really like to have round numbers, like one quarter cup, one quarter cup, one quarter cup. So <laughs> I feel like it makes it easier to remember. So hopefully that helps you as well. Now we're gonna add about one tablespoon chives and you can use green onions if you don't have chives. When I use the green onion, I just use the green part. The white part has a little bit too much strong onion flavor for me. So I just use the green part like we're using here. So about a tablespoon. Okay, it sounds like the salmon's done. Let me grab that. Okay, this looks great. That was about 15 minutes in the oven. And we are gonna have to let this cool. So this is something that you could do ahead. You could do it the morning, the day before, um, or if you have leftover salmon, say you cook up you know, a huge filet and then you have some leftover, this is a great use for leftover salmon. Now we're gonna let this cool. I'm gonna set it aside while we finish preparing our other ingredients. Now we'll add our one tablespoon chives, which is about three grams, right to our bowl here. And next we're going to mince some fresh dill. If you don't have dill, you could use basil or tarragon, even parsley, whatever your favorite herbs are, you can use. I love dill with salmon, so I always use dill. And I feel like it's a little bit easier to find than tarragon. Tarragon, I have a hard time finding. Basil is pretty easy to find. So whatever, whatever you like. So I'm just pulling off the kind of feathery parts of the dill and keeping out the big stems. We don't want those big giant stems in there. And we're actually making a lemon dill sauce to go with the salmon. So I'm gonna pull off a little extra for that. Now we'll mince our dill here. Okay, we'll use about one tablespoon of the dill. 
really doesn't need to be exact. Go ahead and add that to our bowl here. Next up is one teaspoon Old Bay seasoning. And I had some comments on my crab cake video saying we don't have Old Bay seasoning where we live. Well, if you don't, you can use any sort of just basic fish seasoning. We're gonna use one teaspoon. Next up is one egg. And you do always wanna crack your egg on a flat surface like the counter or cutting board instead of on the bowl. When you crack it on the bowl, it'll push the shell back into the egg, which can make it uh, the shell get everywhere or crack the yolk, have other issues. So put that right in. There we go. Next up is one tablespoon whole grain mustard. And sometimes it's called stone ground mustard. I really love the flavor of whole grain mustard or stone ground mustard if you've never tried it. So uh, try one of these. You don't want one with the actual full grains of the mustard. That is not what you're going for. This is a little bit more blended. It almost looks like Dijon, but with some br more brown specks in it. So stone ground or whole grain mustard, one tablespoon. It's great flavor with the salmon. Next up is the zest of one lemon. And and we're just gonna use a zester here and go around. You wanna just get the yellow part, not go into the white part. The white part is bitter. So we're just using this really flavorful outside yellow zest. And you'll see some recipes that tell you to use lemon juice instead of the zest. And I really prefer the zest because the juice will kind of water down your cakes. So I, the zest doesn't, it adds flavor, but doesn't water it down. And you really don't want to water down your salmon cakes because that's another thing that will make them fall apart. And that is everything except the salmon. So now we're gonna just mix this all together. Some recipes will tell you to add the salmon and then mix it all together. And I don't like to do that because it's a lot easier to mix everything like the egg and the mayo and the bread on its own here together and then add the salmon. If you add the salmon and then try to mix it up, you're gonna break up all your pieces of salmon and end up with kind of like a mush. So go ahead and mix this together and then we'll add the salmon flakes. Now we're gonna make the lemon dill sauce and this is such a great sauce to know. It's only four ingredients and it goes with everything. I love dipping salmon cakes in it, crab cakes. You can put it on grilled chicken or other fish. It's really delicious. You can also use it for dipping veggies, like kind of like a homemade ranch, but so simple. Okay, we're gonna start with one half cup Greek yogurt. And I use a full fat plain Greek yogurt. My favorite brand here is this Greek Gods. And it, I find it's a great texture and is not super bitter. So that's the one I always use. Now we're gonna use one quarter cup mayo. And that's what I really love about this sauce is it's mostly Greek yogurt and then partially mayo. And again, you do wanna use a real mayonnaise, not something sweet. Next step is two tablespoons lemon juice. And we can use the juice of the lemon that we already zested. So great way to use that up. And I always do cut the ends off of my lemons before squeezing them. It fits in the squeezer a lot better and it's less likely to squirt everywhere when it fits in there better. So, okay, we'll do it in a bowl here. That one was really juicy. And then the next one. Mmm. And we'll measure out two tablespoons of the lemon juice. So there's one, two. Next step is fresh dill, and this is about a tablespoon of minced fresh dill. We'll add that in. Next is a pinch of kosher salt and some freshly ground pepper. Now, optional ingredients, sometimes I add some more stone ground mustard just for a little more texture and a little more flavor and color. So about a tablespoon of that. It is optional. It's my fifth ingredient, just to be accurate. Okay, now we'll stir that together and that sauce is done. You can make this ahead. This is great to make on the weekend and then you can serve it during the week. You can serve it with, like I said, salmon, grilled fish, chicken, whatever, or dipping for veggies. Really good that way too. My kids like it. All right, now it's time to add our salmon to our filling mixture here. And it does need to be cold or cool at least. And then you can just kind of flake it with your hands like that. Clean hands, of course, and just because I don't always show myself washing hands on the show because it would be kind of boring, but I do wash my hands pretty much after every step. So rest assured, 
If I'm using my hands, they're clean. And I do love my hands as tools in the kitchen. See how the salmon just comes right off the skin? Makes it so easy. I even saw one recipe where they they told you to cut the salmon off the skin and then cut the raw salmon into chunks and then mince it like sausage. And to me, that's just a lot of extra work and mess when you can do it this way. And then you just have your little parchment here to toss in the trash. Okay, hands are clean again. <laughs> now we are ready to put together our salmon cakes, make them into the little patties. I'm going to just line another small, the same small baking sheet here with a new piece of parchment. And we're going to use this because what we're going to do is form the salmon cakes into patties, put them on this baking sheet, and then put that in the freezer. And freezing them is the hack that's going to help them hold together while they cook. If you don't freeze them, they're just too hard to hold together and they will fall apart when you're cooking. So be sure to freeze them for about 15 to 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You can even freeze them overnight and then take them out and thaw them a little bit and then cook. Uh, frozen is actually better. So do keep that in mind if you have, say you have extra of these or maybe you only want to cook a few and you want to save the rest, you can put them, freeze them, then put them in a tight Ziploc bag and just pull them out when you're ready to cook them. So we're just lightly mixing this together, folding it. And y'all stick around, I am going to show you three different ways to cook the salmon cakes. We're going to use the air fryer, the oven, and a pan. So no matter where you are, you'll be able to make these salmon cakes. Now I didn't add any salt or pepper to this because we use the Old Bay seasoning and the mayonnaise and the Parmesan cheese which all has salt in it so you don't need to add extra. Now let's make up our little salmon cakes. And I do want to thank y'all. Y'all, you can tell I'm from Texas, right? Y'all means you all. <laughs> and sometimes they'll say all y'all, which just means all of you all. Which <laughs> kind of doesn't make any sense, but uh, it's just habit. <clears throat> so I really do want to thank all y'all for leaving such sweet comments, such wonderful encouragement. Making these videos is not easy, and so I really appreciate your kind words. You know, you let me know if you make it and you like it, or if you learn something new. I just love to hear from y'all, and I will always respond. It's always me responding. There's nobody else. <laughs> so we've made our salmon cake patties here. We're gonna put these in the freezer for about 30 minutes. So we'll start with the oven first. And what I have here is a baking sheet and I put some olive oil on it. I've got the oven preheating to 425 degrees. And what we're gonna do is put our baking sheet in the preheated oven without the salmon cakes on them. That's gonna heat up the pan and the oil. And so when you add the salmon cakes, you're gonna get a really nice sear on the bottom. Now we'll take our pan and put it in the oven and then we'll let that heat up for about three to five minutes. And you wanna be sure when you take it out, be sure to use oven mitts because that pan and the oil is going to be hot. And while that's heating up, I want to show you the air fryer method. So if you don't have an air fryer, you can always email me or send me a comment. Let me know. I can tell you the one I have and give you a bunch of new recipes to start with it. I love my air fryer. I use it almost every day. And I do love it for these salmon cakes because it kind of keeps everything confined in the air fryer so you don't have a lot of grease splattering everywhere. You don't have a lot of fish smell everywhere. So I do love the air fryer for that reason. Plus you can do them you know, a lot at a time and it's just so easy and hands off. So to start with the air fryer, we're just going to open it up. Actually, we're not. <laughs> we're going to preheat it. And I'm just going to use the preheat button, which is 400 degrees for five minutes. And we'll go ahead and push start. Okay, we've got our hot pan out of the oven with the hot oil and our salmon cakes here. And you can see these are the freezing really helps. See how nicely they hold together not as sticky and falling apart. So we're gonna put the salmon cakes right on the hot oil. And you can kind of hear it sizzle there. We're getting a little bit of a sear there on the bottom. And you can kind of reshape these now that they're frozen. They're so easy to work with. So we'll add those on and then we'll pop this back in the oven for about eight minutes. Then we'll give them a flip and do eight minutes more. 
Be very careful not to grab this hot pan without oven mitts on. You've got to use your oven mitts. Okay, this is back in the oven at 425 for eight minutes. Next step, we have our air fryer. It's preheated at 400 degrees for five minutes. We're gonna just open that up and I'll put a little olive oil on the bottom and we'll add four cakes in here. Now we'll cook these in the air fryer for about eight to 10 minutes. Sounds like our oven cakes are done as the air fryer at the same time so let me grab these out of the oven these look gorgeous look at those they've got a nice sear on top you can see it's searing on the bottom i just love this method of cooking salmon cakes and crab cakes now we'll grab our air fryer crab cakes here oh those are nice and toasty <laughs> maybe could have gone six minutes on those we'll add those here to this platter really nice then we'll add our oven cakes over to the platter. And now it's time to cook our crab cakes on the stove. We're gonna turn the heat up to about medium to medium high, and then add some olive oil to the pan. And a lot of you have been asking me about what nonstick pans I use that are safe and don't have a lot of chemicals in them. And this is the green pan, which is fabulous and it has a completely safe, non-toxic, non-stick surface. So if you are looking for one, this is a great investment. It's the green pan. All right, we'll let that oil heat up. We're waiting for the oil to be shimmering but not smoking. Smoking means it's a little too hot. Okay, this is looking good. Let's see if it's ready. I'm gonna pop our crab cake over there. I'm getting a nice sizzle. Add one more and one more. Okay, and these are done as well. They look great. We've got our three different methods, the oven, the air fryer, and the stove. Now we can add some lemon wedges, and maybe a little extra dill as a garnish would be pretty on there too. I can't wait to try one. Mmm, oh man. Delicious. Thanks so much for joining us on Marie's Kitchen. Today we made these easy and delicious salmon cakes with a lemon dill sauce. The salmon cakes don't have too much filler, so they taste delicious, yet still hold together in the air fryer, the oven, and on the stove. I really hope you get to try these. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It means so much to us and also to YouTube. That's how they decide who else sees this video. So give us a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I've got lots more more videos coming out and I don't want you to miss any of them. Also leave me a comment. Let me know if you get to try the salmon cakes or how you cook them at home. I know people have all different ways of cooking salmon cakes, salmon croquettes, salmon patties, whatever you call them. I would love to hear your stories. I always love to hear food memory stories. So leave a comment and let me know. Also if you have any questions of course let me know and you can go to my website for the recipes mariesaba.com. There you can print out this recipe and this recipe and all my recipes. And if you like, put them in a notebook and make your very own Marie's Kitchen cookbook for free. My goal is to give you some really easy recipes that turn out great every time so you can build some confidence in the kitchen and feel really inspired to share good food with people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you.